Yeah, g'day, it's ZL2 CTM. Just thought I'd do a, uh, a quick video just to provide a bit of an update in uh, what I've been playing around with uh, over the last week. Um, in fact, I'll just uh, hold this up to, this, to the, uh, the microphones, you should be able to hear it. Let's go back over there again. So that's working quite well actually. So uh, what we have down here is a, um, a super heterodyne um, um, simple receiver. Uh, what I did last week is I built up the, the VFO, so that's all done there, and uh, all the software is, is done for that. Um, in line with what I was thinking, so we've got the up and down frequency uh, just changing by 10 hertz for the uh, the 3690 with the mode switch. Um, I was utilizing the LED that's on the board to provide feedback, uh, but the SI 5351 in this configuration is covering that, so just got a nice little high intensity green LED down here. So um, I'll, I'll turn that on um, in a later video, but just wanted to say that was on. So in terms of the uh, the super hit, um, just made up a couple of simple. Um, common emitter amplifiers. Uh, I won't go through the circuit now. I'll certainly put up on the blog uh, and go through it at a later date. But uh, just a simple 3904 based um, amplifier, a couple of input and output transformers just to provide the impedance matching between, uh, if, if for this particular example here, between the mixer and the filter. And then for the second IF amp between the filter and the, uh, the second uh, mixer or the balanced uh, demodulator. So uh, what we have here is we have the RF coming in on this black wire here into our mixer. Uh, that's mixing um, our RF with our variable frequency oscillator. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm using the SIGGEN over here to provide both the, the VFO on channel 1 and the beat frequency uh, oscillator on channel 2. Uh, the two uh, SBL1s are 7 dBm devices, so it's approximately 1.414 uh, 1 volts peak to peak. So I've just got to set that to 1.4 volts uh, peak to peak for that. So I've got the right uh, level of drive for those two uh, SBL1s. Uh, the output of, uh, well, I've got it configured here that our incoming RF is added to the um, RF from the variable frequency. Uh, to output our 10.75 megahertz IF being amplified into our um, 2300 kilohertz um, or 2300 hertz I should say 2.3k wide uh, crystal filter uh, the output of that is then going through the second IF amp into our balanced demodulator being mixed with our beat frequency coming in through on that orange wire and outputting our audio frequency uh, which is then going through just a simple test amplifier. Uh, this is not the final one, it's an LM386 based amp out of the junk box, but um, certainly more than enough drive, as you can hear before, to drive the uh, little earbuds there, so um, no problems at all. Um, I'll look to re rebuild that. Um, probably won't go with an LM380 uh, because I'll be using the earbuds, uh, and we have more than enough drive uh, for, for those coming out of the 386. Uh, in terms of where I had the uh, the beat frequency in relation to the crystal filter, um, because I'm adding my RF to my variable frequency oscillator to come out with 10.75 uh, megahertz IF, um, I'm not getting sideband inversion, so it was a pretty straightforward process then uh, up at the BFO. Um, this is my RF that's uh, coming out of the crystal filter. Um, it's centered at 10.75 megahertz and like I say 2.3 kilohertz wide um, and I've positioned my beat frequency oscillator to be that value there plus half of 2300 plus another 300 hertz here uh, puts me at a BFO frequency of 10.751450 megahertz uh, and that's what I have channel 2 on the um, SIGGEN set to uh, to provide that. Um, I'll code that into here uh, in due course. So anyway, um, this was not supposed to be a uh, big educational video. These never are. Um, I am certainly not an expert in any way, shape or form in these. Uh, just these, these are, as I've said many, many times, just a video log of what I'm playing around with. Um, what I intend to do now for this particular week coming up, now, in fact I've got quite a few things on, but if I, if I can actually melt some more solder, um, I'm going to, because I'm happy with the way these amplifiers are performing here, 
I'm going to swap out the two SBL ones for ADE dash ones, um, which has a, a package uh, basically the same size there as the uh, the 386, and uh, then shift my attention to rebuilding um, the audio frequency amplifier. Um, and that will pretty well put to bed uh, the receiver side of the house uh, and then just matter of matter of uh, changing course starting to think about the um, microphone amplifier and then back through uh, into the uh, the transmitter we'll have to insert a couple of relays um, sitting just uh, on either side of the crystal filter just to make sure that I've got the RF um, being steered uh, correctly for of the, uh, the transition from uh, receive to transmit uh, and I'll adopt what I've done in the past because it's worked well with, with minimizing feedback I'll have that RF passing through the crystal filter always in the one direction um, but like I say I won't go into that now that'll be a subject for a, for a later video anyway that's what I want to do keep this nice and short 73's everybody um, uh, stay safe and uh, we'll certainly see you next time cheers all